Would you ever use cat litter as a substrate in your aquarium? Well, in this episode of Substrate 101, we're going to talk about alternatives to active substrates. Hello everyone, this is Bentley. And today we're gonna continue our Substrate 101 series. I did this minorly in a live stream, but I wanted to cover it in a separate video just in case, because sometimes people will see a live stream, see it like be an hour long, and even if the title is like topical, they'll just ignore it. <laughs> so I wanted to really briefly talk about alternatives to active substrates. And this is, um, we're gonna focus on two, but we're also going to include a couple others. So f what are we talking about here? These are things that we can use as a substrate in an aquarium. Um, we either have to use them like dirt or like an active substrate, but they will do similar things to an active substrate. So typically they have really, really good absorbent properties. They can strip all sorts of things out of our water column because they're designed to do this in some other fashion. They're not designed for being in an aquarium but they will work in an aquarium. So the first thing that we're talking about uh, is things like cat litter, oil dry, turfus, and safety zorb. Okay, these are the four things we're gonna briefly touch on. Uh, there's, there are even some more beyond this, but they kind of fall in the same categories. So let's start with cat litter, all right? Uh, this might seem insane for some of you, uh, and to me it kind of is. But there are plenty of people who will also be in the comments who are going to be like, I've used cat litter in my aquarium, or I do cat litter with an Echo Complete Topper. It's amazing. You can do this. Now, typically, you need to be using a clay-based cat litter. Uh, there's there's kind of a, like a do's and don'ts with this. I really don't want to go hyper detailed. What I want to talk about is why you would use this and, and what it does. Okay, so cat litter is super absorbent, right? We use it to clean up our kitty messes. That can also help us in an aquarium because it's going to pull things out of the water column. It's going to pull out everything, right? So one of the things that we need to do is we treat this kind of like dirt in that with kitty litter, we have to have a cap uh, so that we can go with that same kind of dirty tank feel, but we can use something that will continuously pull out of the water column, okay? Uh, cat litter doesn't do it quite as long as some of the other options, but it will do it for quite a while. Uh, you could easily get a year out of a cat litter tank maybe even two, and I'm sure there will be plenty of people who will be like, I have three, four years. Just general precaution, two years is kind of where you're looking with this. Typically, you can get more, of course, you can put root tabs in and all those kind of things. But we're talking about just it absorbing things out of your water column. Now, the big thing with cat litter is because it is so absorbent, it is going to strip your water column. And you're gonna notice this is going to be a pattern with almost all these things. They strip tons and tons of nutrients out of your water column. So it's really important for us to kind of pre-mineralize them ahead of time or charge them. What does this mean? Basically, you're gonna take your, your whatever that substrate is, and it, this applies to all the substrates we're gonna talk about. Rinse them really nicely because they're all kind of dusty. Some are less dusty than others, but just rinse them heavily. Treat this like play sand. You really need to rinse, 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 rinse. Then you're going to put them in a shallow container, right? And you're going to take a little bit of water and uh, mix it up with a whole bunch of fertilizer. I mean, a lot of liquid column. You could take like a whole bottle of Easy Green, like seriously that much and start letting that get soaked in, okay? This is a process. You need to let it sit for a while and soak all these nutrients up. There are great tutorials online. I will put one down in the description about how to do this with some of these things and how to charge your substrates. Follow these. It's really, really important if you're going to try these methods that you follow these because otherwise you can run into big problems. If you don't charge these substrates, all of these substrates, I want to be very clear here, they will strip everything out of your water. It will basically turn your water into RO water. And as we know, RO water or water with very little in it is extremely dangerous for our fish and can cause like pH crashes. Uh, it can literally leach like nutrients out of your fish. So 
make sure you charge these things because otherwise it can be really bad and you're going to have a horrible experience. Now the next one is very similar to cat litter in the approach that we're going to use and that's a product called oil dry. Now in general I personally would not suggest using oil dry. This is designed to clean up oil spills and and all sorts of like gas messes and things like that. It's typically sold at like a tractor supply store or uh, you know, feed, a lot of feed stores will carry it too. If you have like a uh, uh, Menards, for example, <laughs> they, they're probably going to carry it if you're toward the, the Midwest or the East Coast. Uh, any place that like, has a little more catering toward farmers and agriculture, you will probably find some form of oil dry there. Oil dry is very similar to cat litter in that it's going to just like, it's going to rip a ton of stuff up. And in general, it's extremely dirty out of the bag. So you, again, rinse the heck out of it. It is usable. I would suggest doing a cap with it. And it can work. Okay? If you want to do one of these methods, these are the two I suggest. We're going to start with Turfus. Okay? Now, I'm going to put a little picture of Turfus up here. You can see it's kind of a like brown dirt looking material. Okay, this is uh, used in all sorts of agriculture. It is designed basically to work with plants or to go under uh, artificial surfaces, all sorts of stuff. It's, you can, Turfus is a really interesting product. You really want to dive into like the many uses for it. But the big thing here, again, extremely dirty, rinse the heck out of it mineralize it, you're going to charge it because otherwise it's going to strip everything out of your water column. You're just going to have to do months of letting it get charged in your aquarium if you don't do it the charging process. But if you want like a cheap way to get the same look as aqua soil, like behind me, this is it. It's a light brown color. It's going to look kind of muddy. Uh, you can cap this as well. I think capping it is probably actually beneficial, but I've seen plenty of tanks using turfus where they do not cap it at all and it has been very, very effective. It's really, really good for your root feeding plants, okay? Because it holds so much there, it's much more porous, it has a way better CEC capacity as far as continuous use is concerned than uh, some of the other things that are out there. It's, a, it's very, very close to what we get out of our aqua soils. The only difference is it's not, the material is not pulled from the same places. So like an aqua soil, in most cases, they're basically using old rice bed soil and then turning that into a fired clay product or ash product. If it's ash based instead of clay based, it depends on what region it's been pulled from. That's what they do for aqua soil. Well, turfus is really similar. It's just not pulled from old rice beds, which is the most common thing aqua soils are done if you didn't know that. But otherwise, it's basically a really cheap way to do the same thing. Now, there's some downsides to turfus compared to an aqua soil. Uh, again, you need to charge it, which you don't need to do with an aqua soil. Aqua soils are pre-charged, basically put. Uh, and the other thing is that the turfus will break down a lot faster and turn into like a silty, muddy kind of mess, unlike most of the fired clay and stuff. Aqua soils, most of them last years. Turfus is going to give you probably two years and start breaking down. Uh, so again, this is why a lot of people will cap the turfus. They'll put a couple inches of turfus down a lot like a dirty tank, and then they'll cap it with gravel or sand or whatever they want their appearance to be in their tank. Uh, some people will even use Echo Complete over the top, which I think is kind of slick because you're basically using a, an active substrate that's kind of inexpensive with a like charged active substrate underneath it. Just kind of a, a cool mixing of things. The final one I really want to talk about because uh, I, well, I do not personally have experience with this yet. And the keyword is yet because I'm going to. My, uh, one of my plant gurus, okay? He is the Horticulture Awards Chairperson for the Greater Seattle Aquarium Society. He has been doing plants for years. Years, 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 years. He has been in charge of basically the plant program for the GSAS for at least a decade. I'm pretty sure it's actually been longer. He's absolutely phenomenal. He uses this product. I have seen it in several of his tanks. And the thing that I want to put, because here's the picture. All right, this is safety Zorb. The first thing I want to note is look at the appearance. 
it looks like a gravel river bottom kind of does. Like, if you'll remember the video where Corey went out and they were wild catching uh, Corydoras right in Peru with Dean and... Uh, it was not the trip with Randy. It was Dean and like Dwayne Kitchell and JH Aquatics, which you know, shout out to all those people. You, you guys are all awesome. Uh, they showed the substrate and it was like this, this script, right? It was gravel. It's all the stuff that we, we assume that Corridores aren't going to be on because it's sharp. It could hurt their barbels, but it looked a lot like Safety Zorb. Now, the great thing about Safety Zorb is that it's a smaller granule. It's not that sharp. My dog is chewing on a pig ear right now. So if you hear crunches, that's what it is. Hi. Hi, baby. <laughs> anyway, sorry for that little break. Uh, this is my girl dog, Shed Toto, by the way. Uh, she does not. I tried to pick her up earlier. She did not want to. Anyway, back on topic. I know. I straight off. Safety Zorb is less dirty than some of the others. So you don't have to rinse it quite as much. It has a much more, I would say aesthetically pleasing appearance it's a smaller grit it's easier it's easy to plant in i would argue it's actually the easiest of all of them to plant in because you can just put down safety zorb you don't need anything else oh and it lasts the longest i have a uh, experience with a tank where my my like my hap chair person has had this going through multiple tanks uh, he's had this one particular amount of substrate for like seven years, and it's currently in this absolutely beautiful tank with a bunch of Gary Lang Prey Cox rainbows, and it's it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. It's like a seventy-five gallon. It's and he's he's a little more aquascaper than me, and he's he's got a lot, he's got a lot more ability than I do when it comes to aquascaping, and his plants are gorgeous. What would you expect? He runs the plant program. The the man is like a mad scientist, um, and I, I he will unfortunately never give me an interview. <laughs> I wish he would, but he's uh he's very much no on YouTube. Uh, baby, so anyway. Safety Zorb is really, really effective. It lasts a very long time, and it looks good. The other big thing about Safety Zorb and most of these other products, although Safety Zorb especially, it is extraordinarily cheap. You're talking getting big bags of this stuff for 10 dollars. Right? It's cheap. It's as cheap as buying dirt. The only difference is with Safety Zorb especially, you don't need a cap. It already looks like a decorative gravel. It has a beautiful appearance. It's part of why I'm going to be using some in a tank. You do need to charge it. You need to charge it, charge it, charge it. This stuff can absorb a lot. Safety Zorb is used like oil dry. It's designed to clean up all sorts of messes. So it can hold a ton. But if you charge it correctly, it will hold minerals for an extraordinarily long period of time. And if you just if you add supplementation like water column fertilization, it has that CEC capacity, so it's going to pull some of those as those fertilizer, fertilizers get used out of the soil. It's going to pull more in and pull more in and pull more in. It acts just like our active substrates, only it's dirt cheap. Now, there's some problems, okay? Like it's dirty. You have to charge it in the first place. If you don't charge it, it can be disaster. But as long as you follow those things and you follow some of those tutorials, stuff is really good. I mean, really good. And there's a tractor supply that's not very far from my house. They carry it. Uh, you can get it at a lot of ho like Home Depot, Lowe's kind of home stores, your, your Menards, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's really easy to find and it's really cheap. You could probably even get it on Amazon. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, so that being said, why are we talking about alternatives to active substrates? Why even go over this? There are a lot of people out there who look at the cost of an active substrate, okay? And that will instantly turn them away. Now, me personally, I prefer looking at that as an early investment because if I do that little bit of extra money up front, I know that I can get a certain result basically every time. 
These are alternatives that require a little bit more work, but can give us that same result, especially in the case of Turfus and Safety Zorb, okay? They are really, really effective. And I would caution you to, above all else, if you're gonna choose one of these, choose Safety Zorb. And the only reason why I say this, I know more people that have used Safety Zorb and had significant success than any of the other products. Turfus is very effective as well. However, it's you're not gonna get that breakdown as fast with the Safety Zorb as you will with Turfus, and you get the same effect. And I would argue that because it's multicolored and mixed and has that kind of gravelly look that the Turfus does not look as good as the Safety Zorb, right? It's got that gravelly look where Turfus is just like brown clay. Okay, so there are some alternative substrate options in the next episode of Substrate 101, now that we've covered kind of all of the major categories of substrate, as far as what we're considering for planted tanks, keep that in mind, there's other substrates if we're looking at different other avenues, we're going to go over my preferred substrate setups. So this does change over time. So if you've seen some of my content in the past, um, I've had more experience with other substrates and I've tried some other things. So as I've tried these experiments and stuff, and I've seen like really great growth, like this tank behind me, uh, I've, I've learned some new tricks and I've kind of taught myself some new stuff. So I think it's really, really critical that I talk about those things in my experience so far and also what I will be trying in the near future. Like Safety Zorb. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Leave a comment down below. Uh, did you watch the live stream where I talked about this stuff? It, if you haven't, I'm going to link the live stream. Go back and watch that too. There's a little bit of information in there where I'm interacting with the live chat. And there's folks in the live chat who had experience with some of these products. It's, it's really awesome. It, the first, I think, half an hour is just talking about alternative substrate products. And then after that, it goes to a full Q&A. So if, if you just watch the first half an hour, then you dodge out. You're, you get lots of extra information on this same topic, which I think is really, really relevant. Uh, if you enjoyed that, let me know down below. I'd love to know, you know, what which of these do you want to try? Which have you tried? Have you had success with? Have gone horrifically wrong? Never, ever do it. Tell me down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys. You know, I love that interaction, talking with you, hearing your stories. If you liked it, like, comment, share, all those things. It super helps. It does the magic YouTube algorithm stuff. If you didn't enjoy this video, you uh, can't stand Planet Tanks. You think I'm a chill for safety? Sorb? You can hit the thumbs down twice. I'll understand. If you're new to this channel, maybe you're watching this, you're like 50 to 60% of people, depending on the video, who are not subscribed and you're really digging this information, consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell. That way you can watch any future series like this, catch up on the Substrate 101 series and the Fertilizer 101 series. That way you'll know everything you really need to know for some of the most important parts of a planet tank. We're going to have a few other series too to make sure that you can have all the information you need to have success with a planet tank, have beautiful plants, healthy fish, and enjoy your tanks. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and stay awesome. Okay, we're gonna do the after video with Shantoto. <laughs> She's like in my ears. Look at the camera, baby. Look, 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 look. Hi, pretty girl. She looks like a mini miniature German Shepherd, doesn't she? She's part Shiba Inu, part Pembroke Corgi. Her mommy was a tricolor Corgi. And I assume that her dad was a tricolor Shiba, just based on how she looks. Yes. Hi, my pretty girl. Hi, my pretty girl. This is Shantoto. We call her Shanny. Anyway, post-video stuff. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the alternative substrate thing. I really wanted to make sure it was just like an extra video just in case because some people will literally not watch a live stream even though it's got topics like all my live streams do. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, but I think the information is really, really good. So the options are insane. Like Safety Sorb, seriously, is something I'm going to be doing in a tank in the... Near, I mean, near future is probably not really accurate. I'm hoping before the end of the year, but it might take into early next year to get to the place where I want to be in order to use it. Uh, and I have this like really specific project in mind. I just need to get to where I have the space.
working on it. Promise. <laughs> uh, so, like usual, I think the Substrate 101 series is doing really, really well. Uh, we've talked about all sorts of things. Eventually, I'll have to do a mineralized clay video. And uh, I just want to give a little shout out to all of the members. You guys are absolutely wonderful for whether it's on Patreon or through YouTube. Just you folks are, are phenomenal. If you look it out, there's going to be a small uh, member content coming here soon. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a, a poll that's just for you to kind of influence a few things on the, the channel. Uh, just as a thank you for your continued support. Like, especially during this kind of time where all the, the nonsense is going on. Like, the fact that you guys are... are Chipping a couple extra American pesos my way. Like, I really appreciate it. It's definitely not necessary, but it helps. It lets me do all sorts of crazy stuff on this channel. To uh, our lone Rainbow Fish member, Mr. KB Ozzy. Thank you, buddy. Shantota says hi. Don't you? <gasps> uh oh, you saw yourself on camera. What are you going to do? I'm going to let her down. <laughs> I know that face. That's why I want to go back to chewing my pig ear face. Anyway, uh, I'm looking forward to doing a few projects, maybe even doing like a meet. Um, as <sighs> problem is, the state of Washington had like tried to start relaxing its lockdown, and then people went real dumb, and our human malware cases spiked like crazy, so they're like locking it all back down again. But I'm hoping we can get to a point of where like a small meetup might be possible for those that are up in the Northwest, basically. Um, and until I can start going to conventions, like I, I plan to go to an Aquashella or, um, you know, similar level convention next year. I don't know. Like the, the Chicago one got moved and it's in, <clears throat> it's in December now. It's literally like the two days after my birthday. So if, if for some reason, like things calm down in the, or in early December, I will go to that Aquashella. But if they don't, which I... Man, the way it's going with human malware in this country, it's just not going to calm down by then. Uh, you know, it'll probably get pushed again or canceled, and we won't have one until 2021. And then the hope is just to be able to go in 2021. Uh, so, with that being said, I've been rambling way too much. You guys are absolutely stellar. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, definitely, please let me know down in the comments if you tried any of these substrates. Uh, if you tried kitty litter, you've done some crazy mixtures with like safety orb or turfus you know a friend that's done it it's got this amazing tank let me know down in the comments all that kind of stuff it, it like that interaction super helps any youtubers video you, even more than being like a member it's crazy to think that that might be possible but uh as far as like channel growth woo. i hate that kind of shield stuff i'm not gonna lie but like you gotta do it <laughs> you gotta do it so that you can reach more people and help more people learn good information about all the wonderful stuff that's out there and also just in case you're watching all those this way father fish i just want to say hi to you specifically um there's we did the dirt tank last one and uh he he came in and commented so clearly he had watched it a little bit or maybe some of his fans sent him that way um i have a lot of respect for father fish i want to be really clear about this he's like i might not like dirty tanks however he has a specific method that is from tons of experience and science that backs up. It takes a lot of the risk out of a dirty tank away. And uh, I think it's really, really important that if you are going to try a dirty tank, you either follow some of the methods that I talked about or watch some of Father Fish's stuff and really, really follow his methods because you can see in his tanks, they work for a reason, right? <laughs> but uh, I'm a slacker and <laughs> I like the ease of poor aqua soil and tank get to work. <laughs> also just like I'm so familiar with aqua soils at this point that it's uh, I will have probably better success with an aqua soil than I will in a dirty tank just because I'm so used to them I know what levels of uh, neglect I can give them and not worry about it <laughs> it's sad to say that but uh, you know just my work schedule allows that so anyway that's it guys thank you so much for watching and stay awesome <laughs>